And the Lonnie Donegan story is coming to Louth a week tomorrow, Saturday the 5th of August. And it's coming to Louth in the form of Warren James taking the role of Lonnie Donegan on stage and telling the stories. Uh, Warren, good afternoon to you. Yeah, good afternoon to you. Thank you for having me on. No worries at all. I mean, I think when I think of Lonnie Donegan, I think of that song. I think of the other one, Does the Chewing Gum Lose Its Flavour? Was it always <laughs> sort of comedy songs that Lonnie did? Not at all. No, Lonnie was a very, very serious uh, jazz musician. Uh, and uh, by all accounts, uh, often forget people often forget he is the man who introduced this country to American blues and folk music. So uh, it wasn't comedy, really. No, that came later. In fact, My Old Man's a Dustman, just as a point of interest, is a very old folk song. It's not really a comedy song per se. It's a folk song that was sang in the First World War. Wow. Now, I know he's also known as the King of Skiffle. And this is like, is it like the washboard? Is that what we're talking about when we hear that in the back of a song? Well, yeah, uh, Skiffle, yeah, Skiffle is, a, is an American music, really, uh, like old jug bands. So it was when music, when American musicians were going through the Depression, uh, they used homemade instruments, suitcases as drums, <laughs> kazoos, bath organs, uh, cheap guitars and banjos, and washboards were used as percussion, and they still are in New Orleans. So uh, really, that was what Skiffle was. It was an English version of jug band music in it, it, of its time. So yeah, so it's uh, yeah, you know that that's what Skiffle was. Yeah. When did you then take an interest in the music of Lonnie Donegan? How did that come in, into your life? Well, I was born in the 1980s, so quite rightly, in many people's eyes, too young to understand this music. Mm. But I I had what you'd call very good grandparenting. So when I when it was discovered I was uh, musically inclined, um, I heard a banjo. I heard my grandfather got a CD of 60s music and one of the songs on it was called Have a Drink on Me. And the opening song, you hear Lonnie's banjo twanging away. And then I found jazz music and things like that and blues. And it all came together for me. So that's how I found the Lonnie Donegan sound in my life was as a young teenager. I've just got it in the back of my head now. Have a drink, have a drink, have a drink on me. Have a drink on me. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> you know, all those all those great songs. And and they were, I mean, certainly the ones that we think of, they, they were fairly upbeat and, and happy songs. But you say he was also very much sort of a bit of a blues background as well, was he? Absolutely. Well, I mean, the Rock Island Line, which was his biggest hit that launched every British pop band from the Beatles to Van Morrison. Rock Island Line was an American song uh, about the railways uh, accredited to Huddy Ledbetter, better known as Leadbelly, who gave us songs like Cotton Fields Back Home, Pick a Bale of Cotton, Woe Black Betty, Bam Lamb. They were all Leadbelly songs, really. Uh, and yeah, Rock Island Line. Uh, Rocks in My Bed by Lonnie Johnson. Lonnie recorded that. He took his name from him. So, yeah, he was very much uh, a roots music person of his time, way ahead of his time in the 1950s. Has it always been Lonnie Donegan for you, or have you been out as an entertainer doing other things before the Lonnie Donegan story? Well, I, I was an entertainer as a kid. Uh, you'd, um, so I, I was performing as a child. Uh, so when I was eight years old, I was on the stage. Uh, but my musical ability, and as a singer and, and what have you, but uh, my musicianship came in in my early teens, and it were I started. I'm very proud to say the way Paul McCartney started, listening to skiffle music <laughs> and then finding my way through it. So people like Van and Lonnie and all that, I just did exactly the same thing. Thirty five years later, wow, so, amazing! Yeah. What what yeah, were you doing? Did, what, what were you doing as a child entertainer? Was it was it part of musicals and things, or was it a, you know performing and singing on your own? Yeah, so well, in those days, you could do uh, gigs in the in, in social clubs, and there was talent competitions to do, and uh, loads of great little things you could do as a kid back then. You know, I mean, now now you know kids wouldn't <laughs> wouldn't go in the pub, but back then, you grant my grandparents who, who are responsible for everything really that they they, uh, they took me all over the country to competitions and shows and things like that, and I would sing Neil Sedaka songs, anything people knew. Uh, I would tell a gag, do a little dance, you know, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I, I did exactly what I thought the entertainment business was going to be for the rest of my life. Of course, variety 
is now vanished but mm. i started to play as a little variety entertainer so and then i found my way into the roots and blues music to become you know a, a very serious musician in the end so, so yeah. how, how long has the lonnie donegan story been going well, the Lonnie Donegan story uh, for me has been going for a very long time, but just in more recent years, as I've migrated to become uh, a jazz musician myself uh, with, with a number of very prominent jazz bands in the UK, uh, naturally the skiffle thing is part of jazz and blues yeah. and folk. So uh, when the bands I took, one of the bands I came into is the banjo. I mean, I'm li literally doing what Lonnie Donegan did in the 1950s. Found my way into a jazz band. Suddenly they, oh, you do this roots music. Oh, you will do a skiffle bit. So and suddenly <laughs> the audiences loved it. <laughs> so it's like 1955 all over again. Um, and suddenly I, they said, well, could you come back and do the Lonnie Donegan story? I said, well, absolutely. I've done it for years in a small way. I'll just expand upon it. And, uh, naturally it's taken off brilliantly people younger people love to hear the roots of the music that they love so if they love lennon and mccartney and the kinks so they loved it the younger people like to hear you know the roots of that music and the people who are a bit the elders of the parish like to hear the nostalgia of their youth so it's win-win uh, so when you're not going out with the lonnie donegan story are you currently sort of involved with jazz bands and, and doing that side of life as well as I speak to you now, I'm sitting at the service station at Frankly Service Station, uh, just <laughs> south of Birmingham, uh, on our way with the Jake Leg Jug Band, uh, which is a unique 90s and 20s, 30s band to do a show in Brighton. Uh, and then I do, I tour with Baby Jewels and the Jazzaholics, who are probably one of Britain's best uh, younger traditional jazz bands playing New Orleans, authentic New Orleans jazz. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, I love the sound. Absolutely, and when I'm not doing that, I'll be yeah, I'll be with a rockabilly rock and roll lineup uh, <laughs> tomorrow night. So uh, I'm all over the place. Too. Don't get yourself in a muddle as to who you're performing with when you turn up. You're gonna you're gonna keep a diary for that, haven't you? <laughs> We've just recently had the Lincoln Jazz Festival in Lincoln Cathedral. Uh, I'll, I'll have to mention you to the uh, to the organisers of that and see if they can get you on the bill for a future oh, future event wow. as well because it sounds as if it it would it would fit in really really well. Well, we, we were in Carlisle last night and we're in Brighton tonight, so you do the maths on that. We go everywhere and anywhere. It's always Brilliant. a pleasure to entertain people and see people go home happy. So tell me about the Lonnie Donegan story that you're bringing to Louth a week tomorrow, Saturday 5th of August. That's right. Uh, very kindly being hosted by Louth Jazz Club, uh, who's been going for 60 years in Louth, uh, uh, one of Louth's hidden, hidden gems. And... Uh, hosting us we will be telling Lonnie's story it's a unique story uh it tells the story of a young guy who started as a banjo player with the Ken Collier and Chris Barber jazz bands who they themselves went on to be you know humongous stars in the mm. jazz world legends uh and Lonnie being you know one of the forefathers of British jazz technically for that reason uh but we tell his story of his rise to literal global stardom uh, where the point where he was on the Tom Jones show with the Perry Como show, first first British pop superstar. Uh, we tell the rise. We tell his, how he moved from jazz to blues to stardom. How his fame demised greatly in the seventies uh, from a recording star, and then how he started to have this renaissance in his career just towards the end of his life in the early two thousands. He really went out on a high as young people started to rediscover him, which was lovely. I think that's really interesting. I suppose in the 70s, when things weren't going so well, it was just a phase, was it? People went away from his style of music, did they, for a while? I think it's safe to say that music evolved. Uh, in the eyes of some people, music evolved. In other, in other cases, people will say it went backwards, you know, as, the, as it got louder and rockier and heavier, uh, and people lost sight. And then, of course, naturally his his audience had reached an age where they had jobs and families and kids so it wasn't so easy to go out so lonnie became a cabaret artist in the clubs and uh, and certainly in the nice night spots of las vegas so one week he'd be in las vegas the following week he'd be playing the whatever working men's club at uh, the walls grave workings club, men's club in coventry you know i mean he did what every other artist had to do to survive he worked harder 
Uh, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, his main fans, they had kids at that time. They had families to support. They rediscovered him, like, with everyone that little bit further down the line as his career started to rise. You know, I think that's what people like Lonnie did and Joe Brown as another one and Marty Wilde, all those young guys of the, the early years of rock and roll that no one had done it before, you see. So that suddenly they were discovering how the music industry worked, you know. So uh, they all had this second wind later on. Even Joe Brown in the last 20 years had this second wind, you know. Um, and, of course, we didn't know that because no one had done it before, these guys. So, yeah, Lonnie, they were all setting the trend of what was to come. So it's fascinating, really. It is, and I tell you what, it's going to be a great story to hear. Uh, Warren, thank you so much. Enjoy your gigs tonight and over the weekend, and enjoy coming to Lincolnshire next weekend. Uh, so you'd like to go along to that. It's going to be a great night. Uh, and I think you will learn so much about Lonnie Donegan. There's much more to him than does the chewing gum lose its flavour, a mild man's a dustman. There's much, much more to it than that. There's the blues, there's everything else that's going on there as well. Uh, lots going on, and if you want to be part of that, uh, then make sure that you're, uh, you're going along to Louth a week on Saturday. Little burst of this for you now. Look out, do ain't it? Here I come. When you safely on the other side, drive a shell back on down the line to the man, because he don't care what he's saying now, going home. Going down the Rock Island line. So I fooled you, I fooled you, I got pig iron, I got pig iron, I got all, all pig iron. He said, tell you where I'm going, boy. Where are you going, boy? going to tell her. I'm going down the Rock Island line, it's a mighty good road, yes, indeed. Little burst of Lonnie Donegan. I tell you what, you'll be singing along to those. A week tomorrow, Saturday, 5th of August, at uh, Louth Jazz Club, are putting this on at 51 Queen Street in Louth. And uh, your chance to go along and enjoy that, the Lonnie Donegan story with Warren James.